G'day guys, my name's Josh, you can call me Ja Woodle, and welcome back after a little bit of time off to 7 Days to Die in Alpha 18. I've come back from holidays, I'm fit, I'm ready, I'm raring to go, full of energy once again, and I thought, you know what, I'm a little bit rusty from my holiday, I might need like kind of a softball to get back into it, so I thought, why not go and answer one of the most common comments, the most common questions that I get on almost every base build I've ever done. It seems a lot of people want to know if you can make a float base using the plate blocks or the sheet blocks, which is something that I've actually covered before, but enough people have asked about it now that I thought it was probably worthwhile me going out into the park, building something like that again, and seeing if it works in Alpha 18. With all the new zombie AI upgrades, maybe it doesn't work anymore, I think it probably will, but we won't know for sure until we try it. So I am here to answer your questions, can you still make a floating base? But before I head out there and build something out there and test it and see if it still works, I need to head down down from the MVP tower, down into the Hall of Legends, and say thank you to three more awesome people for all of their wonderful support. And today, I am thanking Goten and Elia, or Goten and Elia, I'm not sure how you want me to pronounce that, Nagorian. It's like, <laughs> it's like if the enemy, like the bad guy in the mask, nagged a whole bunch. Instead of Dorian, is now Nagorian. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great little like slap in the face for the master say and Barry L So thank you you three and thank you everybody else in the tower and in the hall for all of your wonderful support Now I said to go into the park and find a little area for me to build in this base doesn't need to be especially big Floating bases very rarely do in fact the bigger they are the more kind of uh, risky They are the more uh, likely it is that something will inevitably go wrong So it only needs to be small maybe a similar size to that or even this one relatively small and compact But should still do the job so i might just build it out here with the rest of these small bases i'm i'm so excited to go i'm ready i'm raring I, my blood is pumping i'm good to get going on this again it's been a while since i filmed anything it just feels good to be back okay so for those of you who don't know how a floating plate base actually works i'll quickly give you a little bit of a rundown on like the basics of it so we can build on that later you need to know the important like basic level uh parts of these bases before you build into something big and extravagant because if you don't get the little things right when you build something bigger you you're gonna have a real bad time, generally involving collapses and getting eaten by zombies, which are two things you generally don't want to do, especially in this game. So, the way that this works is you get plates like this, yeah? Their normal rotation is to sit on the ground like that. They're not especially thin, uh, they're not especially thick either. They take about one eighth of the full block. Now, the important thing to notice here is the white hollow block around that plate. So you can see that the plate itself, the physical part of it, the actual collision mesh part of it, only takes up a small part at the bottom but the game sees it as taking up everything in that white hollow box. And it's important to think about that because the way the game sees these blocks is how the zombies see these blocks. So that is a full block in the game's mind's eye. So you can have it all like that, make like a nice little platform like that. You can do the same thing with sheets if you go advanced. To get that radial menu, by the way, when you're holding the block, hold R, go across, release R when you're hovering over the option you want, and you can get advanced rotation. Only on some blocks, though. So you get that uh, rotated around like that to sit flat on the ground. Same thing all over again, but you can see the sheets are much, much thinner and much weaker. Uh, it kind of makes sense that way, I suppose. Much more, uh, thinner than the plates are. The, uh, the sheets actually have no uh, vertical physical presence there. There's no actual vertical uh, height to them. I mean, clearly in a physical realm there's going to be, but according to the game, there's basically not. So when you have something flat on the ground like that, you get the same blocks again, and you continue that advanced rotation. But you can see, before I actually start flipping things around, if I place some blocks on top, up, you can see that they actually hover like a full meter off the ground. Uh, so like to you and me, to our eyes, that looks like it's floating. But to the game's eyes, it is the same as having blocks like this. So that there is exactly the same to the game as this here. It's important to remember that going forward as well. So if we can get rid of these ones and flip that block all the way upside down again, like that one, we can place that on top. It's still taking up exactly the same space in the game as these two blocks here, but you can see that there's a massive difference between what it was before and what it is now to the point where you can run up and run underneath this thing and not bonk your head. I mean, sure, you're probably scalping yourself every time you come through. It's super sharp stainless steel and you're just cruising through getting like a number one shave on the way past but you can run under it and so can zombies. So that's kind of the idea that we're going to be working with today. Me personally, I prefer the sheets because they're smaller and thinner and give a better like kind of floating effect but for this, people seem to be requesting the plate uh, 
uh, hovering system or a floating base more than sheets. So I'm going to go with the plates for now, but I might tinker with it and put some sheets in a little bit later. There we go. Just built myself like a little hovering donut over the top here because I'm relying on the way that the zombies think now in Alpha 18. So they think they want to get to the same position as me at all costs. I don't care what they have to go through. They just want to take the shortest possible path to get to where I am, which means in this case, they're going to run under here and in my in their heads, if they're sitting directly below me, that's going to be close enough for them. So they'll just come and they should just kind of mill about underneath here. In fact, let's just not work on presumptions. Let's actually test this. Let's get ourselves uh, what, what have we got? Let's go. Let's go some bikers. Generally, I don't like bikers, but they're the bigger bastards of the zombie world. They should probably, uh, if they could fit under here, then anything could fit under here. Yeah, and look, you can see. I mean, look, their heads are even poking through. Can I shoot their heads? Can I? Oh, I can. I, does that mean? Hang on, hang on. If you guys just hang out down there for a second, baseball bat. Let's get ourselves a baseball bat. Can I just stand up here and can I just wail? I can just, I can just sit here and bonk you on the noggin. I don't care if you're wearing this sweet motorcycle helmet. It ain't nothing compared to a baseball bat, apparently. So I can just sit here and rattle your noodles upstairs. I can stir fryer without even having to actually put myself in danger at all. I mean, sure, sometimes I miss a little bit and I actually hit the blocks I'm standing on. But that's so good. That's, that's. Uh, <laughs> That's probably a fair bit of a glitch, if I'm being honest. I mean, look, the fact that his beard and head are now, like, poking through the wall, you probably know that something's not quite right there. Let's get ready. <laughs> look at this guy. I feel almost a little bit bad. I've gone full, like, 1700s and just hanged him for being a zombie. I'm going to I'm gonna tell everyone that you're a pirate. I'm going to give it your next to the harbor because, I mean, look, this is just too funny. So there you go. That is how you make a floating plate base. I'm not going to leave the episode here, though, as much as this is a working form of it. I'm going to keep expanding on it as I do because that's what a Jabutal video is. I'm going to keep going with this and try and make it as a kind of foolproof as possible, which is interesting given I am the ultimate fool. I am the king of the Muppets. I am the ultimate Muppet. So I'm going to try and make it so that even someone like me can probably fight off a horde and not kill themselves at the same time. It's pretty dicey, pretty risky. But I'm going to keep going with this. And I think the next stage of this, like another obvious stage of this, is just to keep on building the way that we have. The nice thing about the way that these floating bases work is it's completely um, uh, 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 copyable, replicable. You can just do it over and over and over again. On uh, Stackable is probably the word. There's probably a better application for this. You can stack it on top of each other all the way because the game thinks it's solid blocks. You can support any sort of building up on the top of you. In fact, probably the best reason to use something like this, if you wanted to fully cheese out the AI, then we make like this AFK base over here. I've gone with the pyramids. I've gone with the slippery slides. But if you wanted to, you could make those columns go down and then just have have some floating supports underneath and the zombies would never actually touch it so you can really completely brick the ai if you really want to i'm not going to do it for this one i mean you know i like cheesing the ai i like using the ai against itself you know i mean clearly the zombies are super overpowered now so trying to fight them one-on-one -on -one probably won't work you've got to make sure that they're uh working the way that you want them to to give yourself the best chance so i do export the ai but i don't really uh, particularly just want to completely nullify the ai you know i, I still want to have a chance that something could go wrong. I want to give the zombies some sort of hope if they could just think. I'm not making anything that's physically impossible for them. They just don't understand. For what I'm trying to do, I think this will be enough. All I'm kind of thinking at the moment because I want the zombies to group up down the bottom and then maybe just lob molotovs down at me. You know, molotovs are like probably the best weapon in seven days because they kill zombies very quickly. You can kill groups of them at a time. And unless you set yourself on fire, which I do all the time, self-immolation, believe it or not, is not actually a hobby of mine, even though I seem to do it all all the time, every time I whip out a Molotov. But you can weave Molotovs very, very easily, very, very quickly and cheaply and get a whole bunch of XP. So if I build something like this, then the zombies should all kind of group up near the bottom down there and I can just rain liquid fiery alcohol on them and make them have probably the best night of their lives right up until all their skin melts off them. So let's get another couple of zombies out there. Let's get some bikers. Let's get some cheerleaders. Let's get some fat cops. Now, actually, before I start this, Fat cops are interesting. Same with, actually, let's get some spiders as well. Uh, where are the spiders? There's, get some of those. So spiders and fat cops and all the others that have like a special attack only do it when they have line of sight to you. If they can see you, they will do it. So for example, a cop and a spider, if they see me right now, will either jump or spit at me in their respective attacks. But if I stand over here where they can't see me and duck down a little bit, if I had a big window there, but aside from that, if they can't see me, they will just act like every other zombie. Same with demolition zombies and everyone else. So if as long as I keep them out of sight from me, they will act like everyone else and do the same things. And all special zombies in how they think, just how they attack. And it's important to remember that 
that going forward. I'm also gonna need to give myself some Molotovs. Everyone likes a Molotov. Everyone likes a frothin beverage. Let's uh, let's use that. Let's turn that AI on and get their attention. Now, hopefully, oh no, stop it, stop it. See, he tried to vomit at me. He did too because he saw me. But that's okay. So just underneath me by now, hopefully. Yep, there's a nice group of them. See, look, the spider zombie's just sitting there. He can't see me. He can't get to me. Are you punching each other or are you punching the walls? Let's keep shooting to keep you guys aggressive and angry. If they start punching walls, then this might actually not be a goer in Alpha 18. They do have an Alpha 18 now, the ability to punch upwards. They didn't used to have that, which is why things... Oh, which is why things like that, uh, this used to work so well. But if they can now punch up, maybe this isn't a goer anymore. Let's just watch for a little bit longer. I like that all of their heads are poking up. They are definitely doing damage to the plate. So let's go like this. Let's just test out this theory. Throw a Molotov down there. Didn't set myself on fire. Good job, me. But you can see why I had to go up. Because look at all the fire. Let's, oh, I dodged that one nicely. Look at all the fire that's poking through that bottom story there. And it seems like because those cops' head, cops heads are poking through that uh, barrier there, it seems like they can actually vomit at me as well. So that's important to know as well. Maybe the floating base has been nerfed. Maybe it can't be done anymore. I thought it was going to be a slam dunk home run. I thought this was going to be nice and simple. A nice easy one to kind of get my rhythm back into recording. But it turns out I'm going to have to change some things. This isn't as simple as I thought it was going to be. Before I completely change all of this up, I want to see how far we can actually push this design. Because clearly I haven't tested everything yet. But I need to know, before I just you know, assume it doesn't work and move on, we're going to actually make sure it doesn't work. We're going to do the right thing by science and make sure we get the results, even if they're negative. So what I'm going to do, what my original plan was for uh, was for this, was to build a, uh, a bedrock drop base. Now they don't work as well as they do back in Alpha 16, because in Alpha 17, they change the way zombies take damage. So now, even if you drop them from max height, from like... Like the top of the world to bedrock they will only take one third of their damage from that one fall so you can't insta kill them by dropping them from the moon which is kind of upsetting but whatever apparently they're zombies and it means they don't need their legs anymore i mean i guess you get some crawlers doesn't even do that though would be cool if you dropped them that high and their legs exploded fun peeps please put that into the game that would be fun anyway i'm gonna make myself a bedrock drop base so just in the middle here i'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of course this is easier with all the dev stuff but you can do this in like less than a day you can build a bedrock drop base in not much time especially if you have an auger or anything like that that sound means i'm at the bottom let's finish off that blue column press k uh dynamic fabs clear selection and there you go look at that one nice big bedrock drop base imagine having to do that manually for a video that'd be way too long i just wouldn't make these kinds of videos if that was the case right so i've got that one there now i just need to trick them into falling down i could just go with like the slippery slide the super fun zombie happy slide which i quite like it is quite reliable that's my backup but i I want to see if I just leave that open and gaping like that. In fact, let's uh let's really push our luck here. If I've already got it kind of messed up, let's just see how much further I can push it. Let's go like that. Copy rotation. Let's just like plug up the hole up the top and see if that works a little bit differently. Let's paint it red so I know where the middle is. There we go. All right, let's try that and see how that goes. Here we go. Got some zombies' attention. They're all cruising over now. I'm standing right in the middle. Ah, you're trying to dig. So yeah, they appreciate that they can't get up to me anymore, which is interesting. What about if I put a ladder on this? Now, the interesting thing about this is that because we're not dead and we have brains and apparently we're athletic superstars, we, you know, we, we, we riddle everyone with all of our awesome, that's the wrong way to put those ladders, we can actually jump up and catch a ladder that's two blocks tall. Now, the zombies could, if they wanted to, they knew how to, they could run up and jump and catch that, but they can't. So I can run up, do that, jump up on there and get up to wherever I need to be very very easily but the zombies cannot follow but hopefully putting that there will give them an option to attack me so they'll try and go for that rather than digging their way through those plates i mean it changed their pathing already so that's a good sign and now they're just kind of hanging out I'd be interested to see how that goes with a horde knight. Because if I put a ladder there and it stops them digging at all, maybe I don't need the bedrock drop. I can just leave like a platform there and burn them all alive. I, I, I don't really know, but it's interesting to note that that's the way it goes. Let's continue with the bedrock drop though for now and see how far we can take that before we inevitably tear everything down and start again. I'm sure at this point, most of you have either seen or used or taken advantage of a zombie slide at some point. But in case you don't know how to do it, I'll give you a quick little condensed rundown on what it is. All you need to do it, especially in this case, is get your uh, your wedges and your wedge tips. And you also need the stuff for the corners. In my case, because I'm only doing the inside corners, inside corner top and inside corner base. Nice and simple, very simple blocks to get. Flagstone is the easiest way to get those blocks. Don't use wood because you need the table saw and it's a whole thing. Flagstone is the way to go. So. 
you go on face and you place it. No, in fact, if you place it against something that can actually hold its weight, that'd be nice, because uh, sand apparently has the structural integrity of a yada yada yada. I'm not going to say that again. I like leaving some mystery and not just repeating the same lines every single time, because I like that joke and I don't want to bury it like I did with the rounding outside and almost every other joke I say. So you want to place the block so you get this nice steep slant going down into wherever you want them to be. The zombies can't climb it and they also can't grip it. So if they come into here, they're going to stand on this and slide down much like the Sarlacc pit that ate Boba Fett. So we go like that all the way around. We fill up the corners like this. In fact, let's get that one there. Yep, there and there. Make sure we've got nice even, uh, a nice even coating of all of the slippery dipperies all the way around so that regardless of where a zombie comes in from, they will always stand on this and go down and slide down to their deaths. And just like that, in those 30 seconds, we now have a zombie slippery side. Now, it's not just a slippery side for zombies, it's also a human slippery side. If I'm a Muppet, like I actually am, and I stand on that and I don't do anything and just let myself get carried away, I will fall down into the deep dark scary hole as well. But I won't break my legs because I'm going to go into God mode before that happens. So yeah, that's how you do that. That's the method I'm going to use to try and get the zombies down there. For the moment, oh... Uh... I've got rid of my plug at the top. I'm not sure about it because it seemed to just, like, disrupt their AI a little bit too much. But I want to get them to actually come and stand on this and then fall to their deaths. I'm not sure what the best way to do that is going to be. I think we might have to have a little bit more experimentation before we actually find the right uh, kind of the right kind of contraption we're trying to build here. You know what? Sod it. I've got this thing built now and it's like, you, it should be reasonably close to working condition. So I may as well just throw everything else I've got at it and see how it goes. The thing I'm most concerned about is the demolition zombies. Like, how are they going to react to this thing being here and me being up the top? Because they could take all of this down with one press of either of their nipples. They could go up with their best friend and give a little titty twister and everything would come down and I'll be very, very upset about that. But we'll see how we go with that. Get their attention and get the guy's view and turn that AI back on. How's this gonna go oh 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 that's, that's really bad that's really bad they're coming up to get me no stop that get out of here go piss off go press your nipples somewhere else and they're beating on shit that was possibly the worst possible combination of events that could have happened not only are they breaking the plates they also got their big honking schnongs stuck on the plates before they came in they've got the schnoz the size of an elephant they stuck it up in the air and took off a couple of layers because they got caught up they need some uh, they need a nose before they come and actually get squeezed under there again that was possibly the worst possible situation for that to happen. Okay, I reckon we can pretty safely rule out plates now. There's no point building this if it's not going to be demolisher proof, because demolisher will take all this down, especially when not only they get stuck, so they're more liable to get their nipples pressed by another zombie, but they also punch up and break shit at an extraordinary rate. Plates are done. Can't make a floating plate base, so I might tear all this down, go back to square one, and build the same thing out of sheets, because they're much thinner. Hopefully, I mean, the, the demolisher zombies could come through without being impeded by their long schlongs, and then we'll be okay. I don't know. We'll give it a crack. The worst that happens is I get the same result, and we can safely say the floating base isn't an option for Alpha 18 anymore. But I'm surprised by that. I wasn't expecting that to happen, to be honest. Look at that. Doesn't it look a whole lot better? That's clearly floating like four meters in the air. Yeah, well, you would think so. Anyway, but actually, it's actually sitting just gently on top of this little sandwich nipple right in the middle here. So this is two sheets pressed together. And because before when I was talking about how they have no actual vertical value, you get this lovely little effect where it basically looks like there is nothing there at all. It's floating up in the sky and should be nice and safe. And more importantly, there is no like change when you run onto it. It's like a, like a, a centimeter or something, a millimeter of that. No one's going to come over here and bonk their schnoz. They're not going to stop any demolishers here, I don't think so. Now, the trade-off here is that the sheets are weaker than the plates. So if zombies start punching up again, they're going to destroy this far, far sooner than they would have with the stainless steel plates. But that's a, that's a risk I'm willing to take to try and stop uh, zombies getting stopped altogether and have them run down into the pit of death right there. So that's the plan. That's the hope. That's the dream. Uh, all I need to do now is start thinking about what I'm going to do up the top here to protect myself again against vultures because I mean this is fine this is one against all ground-based zombies but there are still those flappy fucks cruising through the skies looking to peck out the old eyeballs so I need to stop them from seeing me at all so I'm gonna have to put up some walls up the top here and keep myself just a little bit safer than I would be without them probably I put up these ones and maybe put like a cage or something on top now iron bars are scary because they're so much heavier than you think they are and I've collapsed very very many uh or much sounder uh built structures as well a lot of structures by banging some 
some bars on them. So I want to do that uh, well, delicately and carefully. I don't want to rush into it, but I do need them to be able to take care of those flappy bastards pecking around my head like the pelicans that they are. I've put in some poles just to act as support. which aren't really super necessary, I suppose. Uh, I mean, after all, all of the strong part is on the outside out here. That's where the actual strength of the building is. The poles on the inside is just, like, I guess, to appease like my inner kind of uh, engineer physical mind that's like, no, physics isn't being applied here. This is not how physics works. This makes no sense. So I'm just trying to kind of keep that part of my brain quiet while I go about building the rest of this. It's also important when you're building, especially out of bars on a roof, but build from the outside in. You want to have like a, like, oh, it's a spiral if you want, or build like a donut, then fill the middle very, very last because the middle is where the least amount of structural stability is. So you want to like make sure you have as many aspects coming in to support that as possible before you plonk on down the last part of your big expensive bills. Let's go like this. Let's just paint the last one of these ones. Uh, yep, we're all good. We're all good. All right, let's keep on going with this. Um, I think we're just about done though. I think this is just about it. I've got a nice little safe space up here. Uh, some cops can still see me through there, but that's okay. Let's quickly give it a test run and see what happens. I'm not going to put any demolishers in just yet because I don't want this to go wrong and me lose everything. Let's just go the normal. Let's get some Chelsea's. Let's get some bikers. Let's get... Uh, let's get some fat hot wines. Fat hot wines are the same as the cops. They just don't spit and be annoying. So let's get you guys cruising up like that, if you don't mind, and just check out my brand new base. Okay. Oh. Oh. Did you just take it? Oh, they're taking, they're taking swings at my sheets. They're breaking my sheets. Ooh, okay. We uh, we may have stumbled across a thing where this doesn't work anymore. I mean, that's fine. If we discover that the floating base isn't an option anymore, that's still a result. I mean, sometimes uh, experiments come up with negative results. That's still data. But I really thought this would have a better shot. Look at that. They've completely ruined my donut. No, you can't ruin me, Rim. I spent so long shaving that. Uh, what? Oh, who said what now? I don't know what you're talking about. Got some more zombies on the outside out there. Just gonna want to see if I can get this to work at all. So if I position myself right on the opposite side of where all those zombies are, then hopefully they will come over here, go into the deep dark hole, and I'll be able to murder them to my heart's content. Uh, so far, not so good. I mean, look, some of them. Ah, damn it! Some of them are going down. Self immolation every freaking time. Every time I pull out a bloody cocktail, I get myself burnt, and all my fuzzy peaches get seared off. That is not what I wanted at all. Dang it. Okay, well, I'm gonna eventually go out again. I think I killed all the Muppets downstairs. I'm still burning. Wow, that took off a lot of health. That was really bad times. Uh, I did kill. Oh no, I didn't kill the Muppets. Oh shit, well, I'm about to though. Here, have a have a Molotov on the way. <laughs> That was actually really cool. I like that. All right, those guys are going to burn to death now. Uh, okay, so it's really not working out how I wanted it to. How how can I fix this? How can I make this work a little bit better? Because so far, it's been a raging disappointment. Uh, you know, before I do anything, though, let's get some demolition zombies and see how those guys go. Let's go where we're going to be. I know I could search for you. There you go. A couple of demos. Let's pop back in my safe spot like this. Pop out of my body and just see how they go. Yeah, I mean, he just socketed the bloody loot bag downstairs. Thanks for that, but I didn't know you could do that. But sure, he's like, hey, you want some loot? Too bad. Boom, kicked it down to Middle Earth, and I'm never going to get that back again. But more importantly, they're going underneath those bars a lot better than before. In fact, it's working better on demolishers than it did on regular zombies. Normally, zombies stopped and punched shit, and demolishers are just running down to get sent downstairs. How did you... Oh, shit, I've turned my camera off. How did you manage that? I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. I mean, you're about to die anyway. Here, have a Molotov for all your trouble. But, like, that's, um... That was a whole thing. All right, he's a genie, apparently. A genie with explosive nipples. What a combination. I think I've got another idea of how I can make this work. I mean, actually, no, before I do that, though, let's just see if it works just by itself. If I just have a regular floor down here, no more drop to the middle of hell, just something nice and simple for the zombies to mill about and be annoying down the bottom. Can I just do that? In fact, let's, uh, in fact, let's try and get these ones and try and make it so I don't self-immolate again. I'm sick of burning myself to death every three seconds. Can I make this a little bit better? Advanced rotation. Yep, turn you upside down. That's perfect. That one there. That'll give me somewhere to stand. And also, actually, as an added bonus, that'll stop the cops from being able to see me uh, from before they actually get into my little killing zone down there. So that's actually pretty good. So I can stand on that and hopefully not burn myself to death again. Although I guarantee you I'll do that in very, very quick order. Paint you red so I can see the lip. All right, let's try that again. Let's see if that works a little bit better. Let's just get a bunch of zombies. I don't care who it is. They can all come and join the fun. There we go. Everyone's out there having a lovely party. Come and join me in the middle if you please. Are you going to stand right underneath me, please? Is that going to be a bit better? I don't know why I put my Molotovs away. Seems to be. Throw a Molotov down. 
All right, that, I mean, every idea I had involves setting them down to the middle of the earth, but I don't think that's actually going to be the best option. Because look at that, if you have just a whole bunch of them chilling out down underneath you, why do you need to send them down, you know? Why do you need to try and trick them to send them down? Why do you have to, you know, d change, add an extra step? This is the thing. Keeping things simple is often so much better. And it seems like that was a much better way to do it. Let's like, step it up a little bit. It's got a bunch of demolishers. It's got a bunch of fat cops and a bunch of spiders. You know, the three kind of worst enemies you can kind of cop against in this game. Well, let's get a whole bunch of them out there and see if that goes a bit better. I've got my finger on the button for the insta-kill pistol in case one of these bubbles starts beeping. But look at that. Look, oh, oh god, they're sitting on top of each other. You need to piss off. Stop, stop doing zombie Jenga. All right, cops are still annoying, but no one down there has caused me any actual issues. They should all die pretty quickly. All right, no, oh, I shot, I shot Demolisher instead of the cop. That's fine. Demolisher didn't die from being burnt to death. It didn't even take off half his health. Wow, okay, I thought Molotovs were the bee's nipples when it came to this. I was using bee's nipples against Demolisher nipples, and they just did not give a flying fuck about it. All right, apparently demolishers are real bad news. If you can't kill him with a Molotov, what can you kill him with other than instant cool pistol and armor piercing ammo? That's, uh, that's a, I'm glad I know that now because I was going to lean on uh, Molotovs pretty heavily when I come against demolishers later. But thank God I know that now. So three Molotovs will kill him. But more importantly, other than the cops, I've been pretty safe and sound. Oh. G'day, everybody. Jeez, I heard some footsteps. There's a wandering horde cruising past. I just destroyed... Look, if you had shot it three seconds earlier, you'd be a welcome addition to the test I was running. But you timed your run very, very badly, and now I've got nothing for you. I'm sorry, but you probably should have thought about that before you just cruised up into the park without buying a ticket. If I hadn't known, I would have charged you through the nose and then murdered you anyway. But I'm gonna, gonna try and um fix this up a little bit, because it's not really what I set out to do to start with, you know? I didn't come here wanting to make just a platform underneath to drop mollies on. I wanted to make a drop down to the bottom of the world to send zombies down to. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Maybe, I mean, look, I could probably just make the drop bigger, like make the uh, super fun zombie slide a little bit bigger. But you got to remember that all of this is supported by this row of blocks here. So I can't get rid of those. I have to make it all within that little area. I'm going to try something that I'm pretty sure isn't going to work, but it's the only thing I can think of that might stand a chance, and that is just doing the same thing again, but underneath those uh, those sheets that's holding everything up, because they're up on the top, so I'm still going to support them by having these blocks underneath like this. There we go, across there like that, and then underneath those, we're going to go down into the same thing again. Let's go down one more again. Let's get, where's my blocks? Get the regular blocks, get a nice little some kind of stable support for them down the bottom, and do another line of zombie super fun happy slide like that there we go there we go so do that all the way around of course do the corner pieces as well because they're always super important but maybe if the slide starts underneath the sheets they might be more willing to come and jump on it uh, rather than just running around the outside of that. I don't know. I don't really know how that's going to work the best. I, like, personally, I think it's a bust. You know, I think the idea of sending to the middle of the, uh, well, the middle of the planet with one of these probably isn't the right way to do this. I think the best way you're going to get that floating base to work is to have that flat platform and just drop Molotovs on them from whatever height you want to go to. Because, as I said, you can build to the sky with this if you really want to. I'm going to quickly give this a test. If that doesn't work, I'll rebuild the floor and send, like, the horde on it and see how it goes. But I just want to quickly give it a red hot crack to make sure... I'm not overlooking something. All right, there we go. Got a much bigger shoot, a much bigger super fun happy slide for the zombies to go down. I still don't think it's going to work particularly well, but I'll give it a crack anyway. I can stand here. I can still set myself on fire, which is always good. I just specifically built that thing to stop setting myself on fire, but apparently it did not work. It won iota. Let's stand right there. There we go. All right, if I get my the tippy toes, get that tip of my schnizzle off the end of this little block, then I'll be okay. Right, let's try that. Let's, uh, in fact, uh, now that I'm dead, I have to go and spawn some zombies. Um, let's Let's see. What do we want today? Let's go. Let's go some snow zombies. Let's go some soldiers. Let's go some spiders. Let's also go uh, a couple of demolishers and some Chelsea's for good measure as well. All right, everyone, please come and join me over here. I'd much like you to join me in my nice little palace I've just built for myself. And they've immediately all stopped right on the cusp of it. Okay, I didn't want that to happen at all. Let's jump across the other side. Did that blind? That was pretty good. Yeah, now look, some of them are going down, but most of them are beating on shit as well. 
And they've also got stuck at the bottom of the chute. Okay, this this just isn't good. This isn't working for me at all. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. So with the new updates to the AI that they've done, they've made like that kind this specific kind of build a little bit nerfed. You can't do it anymore the way that I used to do it, which means we have to go back to what we had and throw a horde knight at it. Let's get this, let's copy rotation. Now we know that this works to a reasonable extent, but I want to see how far I can actually take it. If I can run a horde through this, then I'm sure it'll be okay. I mean, look, it's not gonna stand up against a day 700 horde it's not gonna stand against demolishers that start exploding but it should do something for a little while at least let's go back to my nice little cage up here send some vultures send some zombies send a horde at it and see what happens it started to rain, which is actually really nice. I love the rain. It's nice and soothing to me. Although I don't think I'm alone in that. The sheer number of like thunderstorm apps you can get and just like listen to a thunderstorm thing. The sheer number of those makes you think that that's the case for everyone. I just love the sound of rain, especially on like a tin or plastic roof. Oh, give it to me every night, please, baby. All right, there we go. I've got my lanterns outside so I can see what's happening out there. And all I want them to do is just cruise up, stand on that flat surface there, and cop a flaming cocktail right in the gob. Stick your head back. Like the little teapot song, you know, tip me over, pour me out. I want the zombies to tip over, and I'll pour the Molotov in. Where are they going to come from? Where, where are they going to go? Where are they? Cop Night Joe. They're, all right, they're coming from that way. That's fine. How are they going to fare with this? I just want them, I just want them to stop and stop. I don't want them to break anything. I just want them to be the useless little bastards I know they are. They've got slushy brains upstairs. They don't have a slurpy for a brain. It's all just goop. I want them to come over here and do as little damage as possible. Though it sounds like they're starting to do some damage. Alright, that's less fun. Alright, well here you go. Cop that. Go. Why, why can't I? Excuse me. Why can't I throw Molotovs? Can I go like, up a little bit? Oh, there we go. Okay. So, this is the thing. Sometimes when I pop out of my body, when I do like the free cam thing, it just ruins uh, how I can actually throw Molotovs. And I can't throw them at my feet anymore. The only way to solve it is to go like this. Just move the slot. Then I should. Yep, there we go. We got to just drop some flame and goodness down on their zombie heads. And I mean, that's fine. They're going to be doing a little bit of damage to those sheets here and there, but not much to really be worried about. If I just keep throwing Molotovs down where the last one runs out, that should be all right. Plus, if I keep skirting the edges like this, they won't get like isolated in one particular spot and they'll be A-OK -okay, and I won't have to worry about it. While I've got all these mups just kind of frozen and coming in, I might take this opportunity to turn the speed down as well to quickly just explain how to get in and out. I mean, I kind of showed it before with the ladder, but I'll quickly do it again. So if I grab a ladder, right, I'll put it like this. I'm also going to get myself a door because that's one of the most common comments that I get on a lot of the builds is how do you get in, how do you get out? Normally I say just like frame up or frame in, find your own way in. I don't care if you put a hatch on the ceiling and come in with a gyrocopter skydiving from 30,000 feet. I don't mind how you do it. It doesn't really matter. However you feel best, go and do that but the way that i would do this would just be to attach a ladder on the outside like that now again because every, like these are solid blocks you can attach the ladder to that with no real worries and it's still actually all supported as if you were attaching it to a solid block any other time now with that you can get in and out very very easily up into the door without any issues whatsoever but the zombies will not be able to do that the spider zombie out there can't get in we're all nice and safe we can turn that ai back on again keep them coming and we can get in and out out of here without any real dramas whatsoever that's about all you need to know about the entryway yes there's other ways to do it that's the way that i would do it i would also just laugh my chops off looking at all the roast zombies coming in cop another shot right in the face it's just too easy sometimes. This is this is why you got to understand how the zombies think. The, the, the more you know about how the game is trying to kill you the easier it's going to be to avoid getting killed so anyway, guys, there you go on a red rainy night with some flaming zombies. The bonus of this as well is that the zombies are undercover when you do inevitably set them on fire so they don't get put out by the rains. It could be raining in Africa. It could be raining anywhere. doesn't matter. You don't have to bless those rains. The zombies will cop it either way. Holy rain, normal rain, fire rain, doesn't matter. But I reckon, I mean, look, the floating base still works a little bit. It's not as good as it used to be. It never will be. They've nerfed it with the, the zombies' new abilities to break blocks above them and below them and just the way that they work now, which is a bit of a shame. But I'm okay with it. Like a floating base, I mean, look, it's working within the game's rules, but it feels wrong. You know, it's like going and hiring an Airbnb and you have a tug and you miss and you spruge all over the pillow. Sure, you didn't break any rules. You paid to be there. You hired that place and the owner should probably clean it before the next Jeffrey comes anyway. But it's probably not the right thing to be doing. You know, it just doesn't feel right to me. My gut feeling says I probably should have aimed a little better. I probably should have built a different base. But that's fine. 
fine. If you want to come over an Airbnb pillow, you do that. Everyone needs to have their own fun. Just don't piss off anyone else in the meantime. Anyway, with that massive tangent said, I reckon we can probably leave this one here. Finding bases... I don't know. It's up to you. You want to build one? Go build one. But I'll have to answer your comments. And I hope this answered your comments in another episode. Because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to the patrons of Patreon who made this episode possible. If you like it, make sure you hit the like button. Down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.